Love Nation. Let's go. I'm back. You're I'm, back. I'm back, Jake. And you survived last night. I was down horrendous, and then I got rest. What a concept. Well done, man. Yeah. Proud yeah. of you. Feels good. Feels good. Feels great. Feels like a great day for the Colorado Buffaloes to win a basketball game. Absolutely. Make a statement. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the word I'm using is opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't, you don't necessarily need this. Uh, a lot of people have you in already. Of course, if you lose, you know you you bring out, bring out more questions. But we'll talk more about this, I guess, later in the show. But the word is opportunity. You have an opportunity mm-hmm. to remove all doubt. No doubt about that. Welcome into DMVR Buffs Primetime. We are presented by the wonderful, beautiful Circa Sportsbook, Circa Resort and Casino. This place is the best. It is. It is. Uh, it feels like home. It does. You can book a stay with code DMVR20 and get 20% off your stay. How was your night? It was good, man. I went to a uh, our friend James Palmer, mm-hmm. who you guys may know from NFL Network. He also joins us on the Broncos podcast. Um, gave me a recommendation for a Thai restaurant here off Flamingo Road. Um, I'll probably butcher the pronunciation, but Lotus of Siam? Lotus of Siam? Okay. Uh, and I went there with some of my friends, and um, it was unreal good. Um, problem was, it was so good, and we ordered so much food that uh, we just went food coma mode afterwards, which maybe was a blessing in disguise, because then I came home and went to sleep. I was not going to lie. I thought about you, and I was like, man, I just hope he's all right out there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your concern. <laughs> I got you. Uh, I did unbelievable sports betting yesterday. Yeah. Problem is, I'm just getting so raked everywhere else that it's just not putting a dent. I went three or four on the Pac-12 games. Four or four would have been really nice. Um, then I went two and zero on my Nuggets bets. I got that lucky draw. Yeah, that was insane. I almost forgot about that until right now. Uh, so technically, I went one and one on my Nuggets bets, but mm-hmm. I got the wrong ticket, which like. I just feel like that never happens. Um, but I looked down. I was about to throw away what I thought was a loser, and I looked down, and it was just a different bet that I didn't make. But it was a winner. That's the ultimate luck. That's unreal luck. Uh, and then uh, hit the Avs with a crazy comeback. Mm-hmm. Yep, I hit on the Avs, too. Really, my first win of the trip was because of the Avs, so uh, shout out to them. <laughs> Exile Rugby says, nobody ever butchers a pronunciation on this podcast. It has never happened. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Expert linguist here. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, finish or not finishing. We do have a few more position previews, but the safeties because mm-hmm. under Coach Kelly, we talked about them a lot. He leaves. Coach Livingston comes in. That's his natural position that he's coached. Uh, that's what he played, and there's a lot of hype I think building in this safety room. Yeah, absolutely. It obviously starts with Shiloh and. There's a lot of things that people get wrong about Shiloh, but one thing I just don't think that's appreciated is that he he has that same love, that same passion for being a student of the game that Shador has. Mm-hmm. Everyone talks about it with Shador. It just doesn't get mentioned nearly as much with Shiloh. And the reason I think that's so valuable is because he will be a sponge to Robert Livingston. He's going to show up at all the optional film studies. He's going to be requesting like side meetings Mm -hmm. with Robert Livingston and Robert Livingston has so much knowledge to impart that I think it has a chance like coach Kelly was great uh and his relationship with Shiloh was over the moon but you only have so many things right like I'm sure he could have taught Shiloh more and more things this year but I kind of like the idea there's a new voice um someone else that can just come and just give him gems Mm -hmm. um and coach kelly had coached guys that got to the nfl robert livingston has coached nfl players Mm -hmm. for years and years and years and i think he's going to have unbelievable wisdom to share with not just shiloh but um shiloh is obviously the kind of gem of that room right but the wisdom that he's going to be able to share with those guys will really really help their journey to try to make the nfl yep uh shiloh i mean i think he took a leap last year with uh, Coach Kelly, I mean, we saw him, how he was able to just create turnovers. Um, there's a lot of things you can ding Shiloh for, man, but he is what he is. He just finds the ball. He knows how to get the ball out, how to give it back to his team, and he's a great leader, too. 
And now that you have this even more NFL pedigree coming in, I'm excited to see the leap that he potentially takes. This entire safety room, really. And just, you know, hearing Coach Livingston talk, um, Uncle Neely's had these great videos, by the way, of uh, yep. one-on-one with him if you want to check those out on the pregame show. But hearing him talk about the defense and just seeing what they did in Cincinnati and how involved the defensive backs and safeties were, they are going to be, I don't want to say the difference because the trenches are going to be a whole different story with this team, but the safeties could really elevate this defense. The secondary as a whole could really elevate this defense. You talked about it a lot with the uh, corner opposite of Travis. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have so much talent out there. Um, and Coach Prime really poured himself into this defensive coordinator hire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he turned over every rock, looked, searched high and low for the right guy. And I think that a part of it is because of that just that they have so much talent that mm-hmm. just in the right scheme in the right mind frame this defense can be really good and and safeties are going to be a huge part of it um the next guy asked us to not talk about him uh yep yeah. sorry uh so we'll just say his name cameron Silman craig that's all we can say <laughs> that's all we can say <laughs> um <laughs> miles slusher i guess no we're gonna talk about <laughs> cam uh we'll keep it um broad for you cam Cam's a dog. He's versatile. He played in the slot. He played deep last year. Um, and when he came on the show, he talked about how, you know, not starting that first game, not even playing that first game against TCU kind of lit a fire under him, forced him to look himself in the mirror. And I think he's really, really grown just not even from that moment, but since he's arrived in Colorado. Yeah, told his girlfriend, I'm never letting that happen again. Mm-hmm. And followed through on that promise. Uh, and now I think got to be the favorite to start mm-hmm. uh, alongside Shiloh. Um, and again, it's, we get so caught up in free safety versus strong safety. I think those are old, like antiquated terms at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, you just got to get two guys out there who can move around. And both of those two are really versatile. And, um, I think underrated in different aspects of their games, both of them, like there's this idea that Shiloh is not a good coverage player. I think that's completely, Mm -hmm. uh, out of touch. Um, both are great tacklers, big hitters, uh, bring that physical force, both in- incredibly smart players. Um, so if that is your starting safety duo, you should feel really good about that. Definitely. Um, Miles Slusher, I got him next because he was starting week one, and he was a guy that never just really got healthy after that first game. He only played in four games last year, um, but kind of the same thing, was in the slot, could play back as well. A fully healthy Miles Slusher just adds to this rotation and I think would be like four or five deep at safety at yeah. that point. And again, would it shock you if he became a starter? No, absolutely not. Not at all. Um, it's so easy to forget about guys like that mm-hmm. um, because he was hurt. He kind of went out of the rotation. When he came back, he wasn't the same guy. And you're just like, okay, I'm on to the next. Uh, but – if he stays healthy, he probably starts the whole season there, mm-hmm. uh, especially because he played really well in that TCU game, had the game-winning tackle. Yep. So it's, it's, he's a really nice player to have there because he could definitely elevate the ceiling of this group if mm-hmm. he comes back you know, with a vengeance. Um, next guy, Jaden Milliner-Jones. Kind of a lot of hype coming out from him. He played as a true freshman last year. Showed that he belonged on the field. The way Cam talked about him, I thought, was, I mean, some extra insight into how well he did as a true freshman. I think he's one of the biggest, like, breakout candidates this year for this team. And, you know, I just mentioned raising the ceiling. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely a ceiling raiser. Yep. Uh, A guy who just looks the part. But also, when you you come out and you play that well as a freshman, and I love seeing the linear progression – it was very clear that he became a different player by the end of the season than when he came in. And right. that's all you can really ask for, I think, from a freshman. Uh, a lot of coaches will say by the end of the season, like, you're not a freshman anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, you've been here. You've played 10 games or whatever in uh, college football. He didn't look like a freshman anymore by the end of the season. He looked like a future star. And, you know, you know Cam said it, but just about anyone you talk to has nothing but great things to say about his character, mm-hmm. uh, his approach to the game, and his potential. So I'm, I'm super excited to see how he really blossoms under Coach Livingston. Played in all 12 games last year, 25 total tackles, three passes broken up. Certainly going to see an uptick in those stats. Um, Carter Stoutmeyer, 
maybe the most intriguing, interesting player in this group. Yeah. Obviously, another guy like Jaden came on the field as a true freshman and then just he battled injuries a lot too, kind of like slush, just never really healthy. I think it was a labrum. So that's that's hard on defense when you're trying to lay the boom. Totally. Uh, but he has the frame of a safety, mm-hmm. definitely like incredibly broad shoulders. Um, and, you know, I'll be interested to see what Coach Mo and, and his team are trying to do with Carter's body this offseason as he makes that transition. But you can, uh, you can kind of imagine him as your, like, you know, your dime type of safety who you want to be more, more focused on coverage than anything else. That's not to say you can't come up and play the run, but you'd like to be able to call on a guy who, you know, you put him in the slot uh, lined up against a um, – you know, a star tight end, and you feel comfortable that he can go uh, lock him up. There's a, I mean, it says headache gang on the show. There's a lot of guys who can really bring the boom in this safety room, but I look at Carter's skills as a cornerback, and I think if someone's going to be, you know, your last line of defense, if you really need someone to just play center field, I think he's a guy that you could throw out there and truly trust. Yeah, yeah. I mean, speed, size, uh, strength, all mm-hmm. that stuff. He, he could be a really fun piece for that group. Another guy, Travis J, kind of just working back from an injury all year last year, was really thrown in the fire against Oregon, struggled in that game. Um, and then that's kind of it. I mean, he appeared at, at times throughout the season, but that was really his biggest role was against Oregon. But finally healthy, a guy who was fairly highly recruited to Florida State. I, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to get, but we'll see. I think the potential is, I don't want to say limitless, but it's pretty high with him. Yeah, and I don't have too much to say just because we got so little view of him. Mm -hmm. But I will say that uh, the last two guys that we mentioned, Carter Stoutmeyer and Travis Jay, are two guys who were coming off of injuries in the offseason. And uh, Unk texted us after one of the shows and just said, like, I I keep forgetting to say this, but both Travis Jay and Carter Stoutmeyer look great. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Um, We round out the safety room. Herman Smith coming in. Played at Idaho State, was at JSU uh, before that with Coach Prime and a lot of these guys. He's back in the fold. Ben Finiseth, a lot of people say the funniest guy on the team. Yeah, everyone's fa- everybody loves Ben. Yeah, and then Vito Tisdale. Didn't see too much from Vito last year, but still in the rotation. And a guy who played at Kentucky, mm-hmm. uh, young, in, you know, when he was younger in his career, and th- those fans really were kind of bummed when he transferred to Colorado. So yep. maybe it clicks for him. All right. Shout out to, once again, Circa Sportsbook and Casino. Um, just hanging out yesterday after the show at Stadium Swim, and then you go into the sportsbook. Yeah. I, I don't think it gets much better than that. I really don't. I don't think we say it quite enough that this is the sports fans' yes. dream Vegas destination. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're like me and Jake and, you know, everyone who we were hanging out with yesterday, and you just – love sports like you know just being in there when uh, Vanderbilt hits the buzzer beater to send that game to overtime and everyone's going crazy like I I don't know I just love being around other sports fans it's one of my reasons why I love this week in Vegas because Mm -hmm. there's so many different conference tournaments going on everyone's wearing their team gear around town uh, and it's just like this is sports fans paradise but I don't even think there's a close second you know Mm -hmm. when it comes to I've been to a lot of different resorts in Vegas and when it comes to a sports fan's paradise, this is second to none. Yep. This place was basically built around that, built around the sports book and that experience. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Come hang out. Uh, when Stephen F. Austin hit that buzzer beater last night, oh. just a bunch of random people just start going crazy just because it was a moment there. Love it. Also, shout out to our friends over. Or do you st- I got, yeah, real quick. Um, come out and stay at Circa. Use that code DMVR20. You can get 20% off. Also, download the Circa Sportsbook at, at circasports.com. Circus Sports bets can only be made while physically located in the state of Colorado. Must be 21 or older. All rights reserved. Circus Sports Colorado encourages you to gamble responsibly. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER or visit problemgamblingcolorado.org. Also, shout out to Breck Brew, the official craft beer of DNVR. And something that you can find in Vegas. Like, you know, I don't know how many of you out there um, love drinking Breck Brews. But I think sometimes people hear some of the, the companies that advertise with us and think, like, oh, it's a Colorado thing. I'm out here in Florida. Mm-hmm. Right. No. You find uh, Breck Brew in Vegas, Florida, Hawaii, California, Arkansas, wherever you are, there's Breck Brew. And you can use the Breck Brew locator at breckbrew.com 
to find where the nearest ones are to you or just go down to your local beer, you know, your local uh, liquor store and ask if they have Breck Brew or your local watering hole. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, you know, they might have a vanilla porter. They might have a, a Breck lager over there. Uh, Avalanche Amber Ale, really, really big seller for them. So check out our friends over at Breck Brew. That sampler is everywhere, too. So you can try a bunch of them. Sampler is great. All right, let's go into linebackers, and then we got a USA Today is talking some shit. Uh oh, and we got to address it. But Are first, they really? It's uh, they're uneducated. I ah, would say. jump right. into conclusions. Ah, uh, with the linebackers though, we start with Levante Bentley, the leader of that room, one of the first players to commit to Coach Prime in Colorado last off season, came back, had an extra year, um, and he is just one of, if not the leader of this defense at this point. And really kind of solidified the linebacking core because there was a lot of uncertainty last year. You know, Demoy Kennedy, what's going to happen there? Uh, we had all these freshmen, but he was always like the one solid piece of that linebacking core. Totally. And I think he has the uh, ability to become a fan favorite this mm -hmm. year. Um, this, is, this is a guy who's now a man, a man playing amongst boys. Like he's been doing this for a long time. Um, he's physical. He's tough. He has all of those characteristics, in my opinion, that make – um, those like cult classic college linebackers mm -hmm. uh, that just everyone loves. I, I remember, um, I think I've said this before, but the Clemson had a guy, something like, I think his last name started with like SK or something like that. But it's like, you know, uh, just so tough. Like he's mm -hmm. the type of guy like takes his helmet off on the sideline, like the bridge of his nose is bleeding. Right. And people are just like, man, I love this guy. You <laughs> yeah. know, like Nate Landman was a perfect example of that mm -hmm. for Colorado. And I think that uh, this is, uh, this is his time to really blossom into that role and become a fan favorite for this team. He had five sacks and 11 TFLs last year and 68 total tackles. Um, well, if you remember at the end of the season, we were just kept being like, dude, Bentley, I think had like another two tackles for a loss right. in this game. Like he was just, um, someone actually just said it in the comments. MLN, once Bentley stopped overthinking and had fun playing football, he showed flashes of greatness. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's exactly what it was, but it did feel like all of a sudden he was just like freed up yeah. at the end of the season, just going and being a linebacker, using his instincts. Uh, and instincts is a word that's going to come up with the next guy we talk about, but, you know, just play freely. Yeah, we, we had the whole thing with Juju going on, but Bentley really stepped up because Juju was the best linebacker at one point, and then he kind of went into his issues, and then Bentley really rose his game at – uh, after that and just really kind of took over the defense. You know, probably similar to Cam, right? Mm -hmm. Like you ha you see your opportunity sure. taken away from you and you're like, I can't let that happen again. Yep. Jalen Wester coming in from FAU, joining his brother out, or was the first one to commit out here. Then his brother, LeJonte, joined him out in Colorado. This guy is all speed and see ball, get ball. So instinctive. So instinctive. It's the number one word that we used about him when we saw his tape after he committed. Um, you don't rack up tackles the way that he did uh, at, at the rate that he did um, without just being a guy who has a nose for the ball. Um, I, I just, when I see him, I'm just, uh, this is going to sound stupid, but I think you guys will know what I mean. I just go, that's a football player. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, dude was just born to play football. Yep. Uh, and he plays with an intensity and with a... Um, a, a no, a know how uh, that I just love. I'm really, really excited for him. I think maybe this linebacking group as a whole can just be fan favorites mm -hmm. this year. Like uh, last year, it was a little bit of a I don't know what the word I'm looking question mark. Like just at, week in, week out, we're like, who's playing? Right. Uh, you know, are they are the, are they playing well? They didn't play well at all in the first game against CCU. They played really well against Nebraska. Like. It's just one of those things that was up and down. I think these guys can be a model of consistency this year. We, we haven't done defensive line yet. That's the last one. We'll probably do that tomorrow. But when we talk about guys like Torian Carter and Chidoze, who can... Clayton Skalski. Skolski. Wow, nice pull there, yeah, Josh. Great job. Um, we talk, you talk about these new defensive tackles we have and how they're going to be able to command double teams and just free up these linebackers. And when you have a guy that's as fast and instinctive as Jalen Wester... I, I see plenty of TFLs coming in his future. He really exploded in the last month of the season for FAU. Um, had at least, well, he only had five tackles in one game, but eight, eight, five, seven in the final month. Easily the best month of the season for him. Had three and a half TFLs against East Carolina. So a younger player, too. Again, kind of still trying to find his way, figure it out completely. He's going to have a new defense here, but the talent is obvious when you put on the film. 
Yeah, I think he has a chance. You know, we talk about Bentley as kind of the guy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Jalen Wester becomes that Mm -hmm. before the season starts. Uh, And obviously they'll they'll be playing off each other, but, you know, the – if it was the NFL, like the green dot guy. Mm-hmm. Two guys now who a lot of people are excited that they got them and we just never really saw them. Uh, or They were on the field, but they were never in the roles that we envisioned them in and were never quite the players that we thought we were getting at this point. But now both healthy, Brendan Gant and Demoy Kennedy. Yeah. Um, Gant, obviously the more of the tweener, um, but both of them are – Fast linebackers, something Mm -hmm. that can be so valuable in college football these days. Um, And neither of them blossomed in the way that we we expected. Uh, But I think with Demoy, he deserves the same leash and, um, I guess, forgiveness that we give to Alton McCaskill. Mm -hmm. Um, Because he's another guy who is coming off of a very serious knee injury. The one thing I will say is that when he did get out there, it was clear to me the reason why they didn't keep him out there, and that was just gap discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you see when, co- when, when a linebacking coach really relies on a player, it's because they make the right play at the right time and they're in the right place. Mm-hmm. Linebacker is a position where you can go make plays, you can go get those tackle for losses, you can shoot gaps, but – you will lose your job if you're attempting to do that and you're wrong. Right. Uh, and I don't know if it was that as much as it was a little bit of hesitation, I mm-hmm. felt like, on his part. And then all of a sudden he's getting washed out of the play. Yeah. Um, so, Demoy to me, is, a, is an absolute ball of clay who could end up just popping off uh, if it all kind of comes together for him. But at, at the very least, I think he's someone that you can use in – Specialty situations um, where you can, you know, almost like that star. You could Mm -hmm. play him in the star role just as a bigger guy. There's the guy um, who went to the Eagles, Davion Taylor, for Colorado, who is very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Um, A really, really fast linebacker um, who could just be a weapon for you in the open field. And this guy was just, like, blowing up screens left and right, Mm -hmm. just using his natural athleticism. Maybe it's not as much lining Des Moines up behind the defensive line, and maybe it's more getting him out in the slot and allowing him to be more in the open field and use that skill set. Yep. Uh, One of the fastest players on the roster, too. Gant is another guy, I mean, an older player who, uh, coming off that injury – you kind of saw the hype a little bit as it as he was, you know, getting back to practice, uh, you know, putting the pads on, but just never really had a role on the field. But I think, uh, you know, this linebacking core, you look at it, and we're going to talk about the two young guys we have as well. I feel much better about it this year, just knowing that all these guys are going to be healthy. Uh, you bring in another guy who's just going to be sideline to sideline and Jalen Wester. Um, much improved, I think. And then, like I said, the young guys, Victory Johnson and Kofi taylor Barks. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talked a lot about this with other positions, but it's just like, don't forget about the guys who were freshmen last year. Mm-hmm. Um, remember Coach Prime walked in and said, I want to win now. Yep. Um, in most cases, playing freshman is not a win now move unless you have, you know, true game changers, true um, just playmakers like a Dylan Edwards. Obviously, Cormani got on the field, Jaden later in the season. But – there's some of these guys that would have maybe played earlier at other schools um, and now are going to have that opportunity to to take the knowledge that they got last year. You're settled in. You're, n- you're not new to this experience anymore. Um, and some, I, I promise you, multiple players at different positions are going to blossom and, uh, and become big-time players for this team. Mm-hmm. So... That's it on linebackers. Um, last position preview tomorrow, defensive line. The, the big guys in the interior are going to be huge difference makers. We'll get into it all. USA Today, though. Brent Schrotenboer. Pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. <Come> Schrotenboer. <laughs> Give me some credit over here, please. Because it's Kalen DeBoer, right? Yeah. So Schrotenboer. Schrotenboer. All right. Wrote this article. Uh, titled, Deion Sanders' Unique Recruiting Style at Colorado. 
Zero home visits since hiring in 2022. Okay. Um, I don't know. Apparently, Coach Prime has access to this service that the university is giving him uh, that will allow him to take so many visits, so many air miles or whatever. They've got a budget for it. He hasn't used it. Um, and so they reached out to the school. They confirmed that. And he's making it into a big deal about their recruiting strategy and why home visits matter. But there's even a quote in here. I'll just read it right now. Remember Aaron Butler? Yes. So he was asked about this, and he told USA Today that neither Coach Prime nor Steve Sarkeesian visited him at home. He, of course, goes to Texas Mm -hmm. at this point, and he said, I'm not really too much into that. My receivers coach is the one who's going to develop me. So even the players... It's recruiting's different now. There's a lot of things different in college football. Yeah, but it's more so just about what's actually you're, you're going to do on campus and stuff at this point. Totally. First of all, shout out AB uh, for kind of mm-hmm. just pouring you know cold water on this. Um, this is such an overblown angle, mm-hmm. and where I take the most issue with it is. Recruiting at Colorado is the best it's ever been. Yeah. So what what are we trying to prove here? What are you, what are we right. trying to accomplish here other than just like, ah, uh, Coach Prime doesn't do it the way that we're used to again, and we don't like that. Um, if if they were struggling to recruit, if they didn't land the number one offensive tackle in the country right after saying their number one position of need was. Uh, offensive line if they hadn't had the number one transfer portal class back-to-back years Mm -hmm. I think that this maybe would be a story but Neely said this before and I'll echo what he said everyone sees Colorado it's it's everywhere now it's all over the national spectrum you turn on college football on Saturday they're showing you a drone shot of Boulder Colorado you turn on YouTube You've got three separate channels giving you an inside behind the scenes look of what how great the facilities are and how beautiful the views are in Boulder Kids want to come here. Mm-hmm. It's very different, I think, than back in the day when it was like you had to go show up at someone's house and uh, win over the parents and get them to come out and, you know, earn that visit. No, they're getting hundreds of players, literally, mm-hmm. on campus every single year, um, really every single quarter. Yeah. And those players then they get to have their one-on-one with coach prime that's when they have their parents in the room that's so they're just doing it differently um and i'm not saying that there could be nothing to be gained from uh in-home visits i think that um the the cool factor of being able to say that coach prime was on your couch Mm -hmm. uh probably hits but i think that in terms of resources uh and investment the way that they're doing it is clearly working. And so I'm not going to sit here and complain and say that Coach Prime needs to change the way that he's doing it. Cam Duncan nailed it in the comments. He says, Dion doesn't need to visit anyone because he ain't hard to find. Yeah. That's the whole, like, rallying cry behind this, like, recruitment strategy is come out and see it for yourself. Um, come meet the coaches out here because this is where you're going to spend a lot of time. And you talk to these guys when we talk to them. They spend a lot of time just in that facility. And it's gorgeous. There's tons of stuff in there. Um, it's really all that you need, and that's why they live in there, basically. Yeah. That's what you're going out there to see. That's the most important part of being recruited to Colorado is seeing the facility, the champion center. This is the ultimate spin, but I'll put it out there anyway. We've heard so much about how much Coach Prime loves Colorado. Mm -hmm. If he didn't, wouldn't he maybe be wanting to take, <laughs> right. you know, recruiting <laughs> trips out to Texas and Florida? And, yeah. uh, you know, he's like, oh, I need to get out of here. Let me go visit some kid at home. No, exactly. I think he actually really does love it mm-hmm. uh, and wants to be in, in Colorado as much as he can. Absolutely. It's a great point, man. What um, else was said in this? Like, would you say the overall tone of this article is like – painting it in a, in a way that says like oh this is like lazy or the the impression i got is not quite old man shaking his fist at the clouds but it's all it's like this is different we got to get angry about this like, okay uh alfred williams had a quote in here he's talking about when uh, coach mccartney uh recruited him and he said he recruited my mom he didn't recruit me mm-hmm. um but things were so different back then. you couldn't hop on a facetime you couldn't just tell them like 
hey, man, we got a massive spring game. Come out here. There's going to be so much going. Like, that stuff didn't happen back then. Yeah, and, and I'm sure it did a little bit, but here's the thing. Alfred Williams' mom had no idea who Bill McCartney was. Mm -hmm. So he had to show up and show her who he was as a man. We know who Coach Prime is as a man. Um, and, you know, a mom in Dallas, Texas, knows exactly who Coach Prime is mm -hmm. and knows, you know, the way that he has carried himself throughout his life. And they don't need to be sold on the idea of their son going to play for Coach Prime, like, directly. Right. Now, of course, again, if Coach Prime wanted to do this, um, I certainly would not say that it wouldn't help, you know, in certain situations. Right. But acting like uh, the thing that I wanted to – you know, and I, I didn't see the article, but the thing that I want to make sure is that it's, this isn't painted as like, oh, he's, he can't be bothered to like work because this dude is, is working every single day mm -hmm. to try and make Colorado the best so that he can make it. Well, I mean, it mentions a lot of factors in this. It mentions the blood clots, the whole foot issue that he had, and obviously he was struggling to get around for mm -hmm. a bit this time last year. Um, That's a great point. I didn't so. even think of that, but do you remember the video of um, – when they went to the college football national championship, it was at SoFi, mm -hmm. uh, and Bucky kind of documented the whole thing, and it was like he got off the plane. His foot was killing him. He's, like, laboring, walking, yep. you know. Like, um, the, all that stuff plays a role, you know. Mm -hmm. it's When you fly, it, it, it can mess with those types of things. Um, there's walking one... through the airport, like, there's a oh, lot yeah. of traversing that goes on when you travel that if you have a, you know, you're missing two toes and recovering from major surgery – makes it a lot less fun to travel right uh there's one last quote in a quote in this uh jackie Sherrill, old um, old time football coach uh, i think recruited like i can't remember where was it just at tony dorsett so this is old timey stuff you know what i mean like yeah what, why are we talking to alfred william and like we're, this is the 80s and 90s we're talking about yeah i don't know go find like nick saban go talk to jim harbaugh like Guys who have been doing it at the top of the game recently. That's really interesting. It's odd to me. Not surprising, though. What did he time. say? Um, so this is Coach Cheryl. He said, I would never offer a player a scholarship unless I went into the home and saw the recruit in the presence of his mother. If he was not respect respectful to his mother, then I would not recruit him. I signed a lot of players because the mother would say, you are the first head coach to come to my house, or that you are the only head coach that has come to my house. I could tell more about the recruit's character in front of his mother in five minutes than talking to all the coach." All the coaches and teachers. All right. Well, everyone has a different approach. But, but even th in that. I know. Yeah. He said it in that. It's saying that it wasn't, you know, the commonplace. Right. Okay. Let's talk about this basketball game. Um, the goal is always to win money out here, right? Yes. Well, the goal, I think the goal is always just to I mean, get your true. money up no matter where you true, are. True. True. <laughs> but, uh... If you feel like you need a quick 200 bucks when you get back, head up our friends at Premier Credit, uh, Premier Members Credit Union, open a checking account, sign up for e-statements, boom, 200 bucks. Yeah, I could use that. Um, they're a credit union, not a bank, which means they do things differently, like putting their members first with higher savings, interest, and lower loan rates. Um, whatever your goals are, they can help. PMCU is all about creating a better banking experience for their community. Again, when you become a new member at PMCU, you'll get 200 bucks. You just have to open a checking account and sign up for e-statements. It's that easy. This will be your best money move yet. Head to becomepremier.com to find out more. It's kind of cool right now because we have this, uh, I guess you would say, a private area yep. where we're doing the show today. Um, but one of the things that they got to do is uh, hit up our friends over at Empire Today, get mm, these floors yes. finished. Um, and Empire Today is... The goats when it comes to flooring. You've heard the ads, of course, mm -hmm. uh, forever. But now you can get hooked up by being a fan and listener of this show. Because when you go to empiretoday.com slash DNVR, you can receive $350 off when you use the code DNVR uh, to get your new floor set up. So if, if things are starting to get a little creaky, a little cracky, uh, hit up empiretoday.com slash dnvr and get $350 off your, uh, uh, your new floor from Empire Today. Um, Dave DeBoss has this comment. I personally think it's impressive no home visits since you got the number one OT. 
CU, you mentioned it, is recruiting at a higher level than they ever have before, and they are getting blue chip players. Yep. And it's because of the culture created in Boulder. Like, home visits are, I don't know, you can sway some guys, I think, still at this point in time, but. Coach Prime has brought more five star players onto Boulder's campus, like, as buffs, not just as visitors. Yes. Than the entire history of the program before him combined. Yeah. It's crazy. Recruiting's doing just fine. Um, you were pretty hot on uh, Pac-12 basketball mm-hmm. last night. How is uh, how's USC doing? Arizona closed the half on a 12-2 run, so they're down 12. Oh, wow. It's only 20-16 yeah. in the second half? Yeah, they, didn't, uh, they just decided not to score for like the first five <laughs> minutes of the game. USC, honestly, was playing great defense on Arizona. Uh, obviously, they're on pace for 56 points, which mm-hmm. might be a season low for them uh, if it were to, to shake out that way. They're just – they have no offense going. Wow. Well, Buffs and the Utes play tonight, 8.30 out here, 9.30 back home. It's 11.30 Eastern. And uh, just warning you right now, there's a chance it could be later because the last game didn't tip off till what, 9 out 9:15. here? 9.15. So, yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, Allie's out in New York right now. And uh, Parker's with her. He's a big bus fan as well. They were, like, talking. I guess they found a place to go watch it. I'm like, just so you know, the game's probably going to be tipping off after midnight. Mm-hmm. She's like, uh, maybe we won't do that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, not not a great time. This is a uh, – I mean, is any is the committee going to be watching this game? Are they, are they just going to wake up tomorrow and look at the box score? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. They don't watch uh, West Coast games for the Heisman or anything else. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Utah really uh, took it to ASU last night, though. They beat the Sun Devils 90-57. to This game was never close. Uh, Utah's guards were just running around. Lawson did some things. This is going to be the third time the Buffs take on Lawson Lovering this year. Mm. Might be uh, – might get my heckle on tonight. There you go. <laughs> um, but I brought up, you know, how well the guards did. Um, and I think that's big because, obviously, Cody comes back. He's one of your – if not your best defender. So to have him out there to help lock uh, someone up, the line is four and a half, I think it was. Yep. So they're, Vegas is projecting a close game. And Cody just feels if he is anywhere near where he was at uh, before the injury, it's going to be a massive just addition to this team at this point in time. Yeah, and again, this is something I talked about a little bit yesterday. Like Utah has guys on their team mm-hmm. that if you let get hot, you might be in trouble. And that's where having Cody out there. And obviously KJ and – Tristan, you know, those guys uh, are great defensively as well when they when they turn it on. But mm-hmm. Cody Williams is a true weapon on defense. Uh, you can switch him on to anybody. If their point guard's going off, you can say, hey, go go give him fits with your length and your, you know, aggressiveness. So uh, it's going to be huge to have Cody back. But like I said at the top of the show, this is opportunity. Win tonight and there are no questions. Yeah, it's, uh, it's done. You're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that this team has found another gear when their back were up against the wall. Their back is not necessarily on the wall anymore. Mm-hmm. They've got they've created some space between their back and the wall. Yep. But they should not change the things that they've been doing, the, the way that they've been out-efforting teams, the way that they've been executing offensively and valuing the basketball. Uh, and if they can do that, they're going to get this dub tonight, and we're going to be – Honestly, done talking about the bubble, and now we can start to focus on, hey, let's go, go win a Pac-12 championship. Yep, definitely. Um, you, you know, you talk about back against the wall. That's kind of where Utah is right now, though, because they're on the bubble. And they really need to win tonight to keep their tournament hopes alive at all because, I mean, CU was in those battles with Utah at the end of the season, really, for these bubble spots. Yep. Um, so we'll see what kind of Utah team we get tonight. Uh, they were really on fire last night. And that's what these tournaments are about, about getting hot at the right time. But CU's coming in pretty hot, too. Yep. Do you think the layoff, is it an advantage that Utah really had a layup against ASU last night in terms of just getting out there, you know, really seeing what they're capable of? I don't love it. Yeah, I think that uh, it's nice for them. If the Buffs were in that position, I would be saying this, that was a huge advantage for them. Right. I'd be like, this is why you don't want the first round by, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we saw it happen with the women. I thought the exactly. same thing. Uh, they went out there. They it, It's the exact same scenario. They blew out uh, Oregon, mm-hmm. and then they ran into Oregon State, who's you know gave them fits, and that rhythm game didn't really help them at all. 
Make some predictions. Buffs in a very close one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say, like, KJ Simpson floater at the buzzer to win by two. Let's go. I love that. I'd say the same thing. I think this is going to be a good game, a close one. I'm going to give Colorado the edge. Um, and let me get a, a KJ takeover performance tonight. Undisputed best player in this basketball game. Let's go. Uh, over, under, set at 151 and a half. I would take the under. I think it's going to mm -hmm. be a sweat fest. Yep, definitely. All right. What do we got, Alyssa? Um, Devin Bush says... Devin Bush? Yep, yep. Uh, when are we going to recruit Wolverine's some legend. Samoans? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, want, uh, you want to talk about the 80s and 90s in <laughs> Boulder. Uh, they were definitely doing some in-home in visits with Samoan players. Uh -huh. uh, I would love to see that. You know, it's a, it's a pipeline that Colorado's had success with in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea how to answer the question. I mean, yeah, I don't know how to directly answer it either, but Utah and BYU still do it. You're in the same conference with them. I mean, still some of their recruits. Why not? Totally. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next question from Paisley Jones says, do you think Des Moines could play edge? Mm, I think he's a little small for that. He's only listed at like 215. Yeah, the, the, the problem would be when the tackles, you know, get their hands on him. Can right. he get off of that? Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought that was just something that he struggled with last year at linebacker as well as once, you know, once those, uh, those big guys get up to the second level, do you have the strength to be able to push them off of you and go make a tackle? I think if anything, he'd be a guy, you know, you mentioned it when we talked about him, move him to the star or something. That's, that's more the position that if you're going to change his position, just somewhere where he can use his speed out in space more so. Mm -hmm. I would, I would honestly be. Trying to scheme ways to get him away from offensive linemen, yes, not closer exactly. to them. Yeah. Um, next one comes from Arosa Day. Who will have the most sacks on the team this year? You picked your boy, Okanlola. Yeah, Sammy Sacks. Um, I'll go with BJ Green. Nice. Love it. Big, big BJ Green supporters here. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> um, Nicole said we have a 6'4 QB recruit from Hawaii. So did Cam. Um, oh, they're recruiting one, I think. Yeah. Not too long ago for 2025. I'm trying to think. Who would that have been? I can't even remember. Is it the dude who's related to the um, Tennessee? Imaleva. Madden Imaleva. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see where he's from. Um, but Hawaii does have a, a track record with uh, quarterbacks, at least. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, every position you can find great players from mm -hmm. uh, the Samoan parts of the country. Uh, Madden Iamaleva is from California. Okay. That's what his 247 page says. I don't know if, you know, born and raised in Hawaii or something. But What's next? Uh, next one, Cam Duncan says, do you think Cam, Michael, and Draylon Miller will see the field this year? Yes. 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 Too talented, too explosive, uh, too unique mm -hmm. to not. Um, I find it interesting that Cam is going to be coming in and working on the offensive side of the ball first. But with that speed, again, I think we've said this before, throw him back there and have him return kicks, man. Yeah. One of the holes I thought last year that I just didn't love about the offense is there wasn't enough – um, speed players running vertically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I thought Shador did a fantastic job of completing passes to Zay down the field, and not to say Zay is not fast, but right. uh, very few Jimmy vertical routes, no Dylan Edwards wheel routes. Um, you know, I, I, and I know that they just struggled to protect long enough to push the ball down the field, so it was a part of it. But, like, can Cam Michael just be a nine route specialist this yeah. year? Like just line him up outside and say, you know what's happening. You're not going to be able to stop it. Mm -hmm. Well, and then Draylon has the ability to be like your horizontal field stretcher. If you mm -hmm. want to send him in motion, but have him be your motion guy. Um, and then you can kind of work in those jet sweeps, those reverse type plays that uh, really allow him to Utilize his skill set, at least that he says, like Debo. I mean, just get the ball in his hands in any way possible. Some screens, just easy kind of uh, yak chances just to work in space. 
Uh, Nicole said the kid was offered this week. Okay. So uh, we'll figure out who. Yeah, it is. we'll find out. Next question. Uh, next question comes from Jesse Marion. He says, "What's CU's record? What's their likelihood to get into the tourney?" Twenty-two and nine as it stands. Um, again, twenty-three and nine. Like that just sounds so much better. Yeah. Um, their chances are very good. Very very good. Uh, DraftKings before they took down the odds had them at what was it minus four hundred. I thought it was more. I thought it was like minus 500. No, I think it, it, it was at minus 500 to make the tournament. Um, so that means heavy favorites to make the tournament. To the point then, they just took it off. Uh, they didn't want uh, any more action coming in on that because they presumably felt it was a lock to happen. Um, so tonight really shouldn't affect that. But again, just go take this opportunity, run with it, win the game, and remove all doubt. Um, there's a lot of projections out there, but Lenardi has Colorado uh, this morning at last four in. Okay, so going to uh, to Dayton? I think so. But a win tonight could really change it. Yeah. Put him in the last four buys. Absolutely. Uh, next, or, next one from Mr. Support Friend says, are you guys going to do an episode with Neely about Coach Prime's book? Uh, we were talking we'll about, Co- about yeah, we were talking about Coach Prime's book just yesterday. Definitely, uh, got to get our hands on a copy, and uh, then we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, I've heard that if you have a Spotify Premium, you can get the free audio book on there. Well, that's cool. Maybe that's a flight home. There you go. Thing to do. Yeah, but Coach is on a big uh, book tour right now. I think he was in California yesterday. Cool. Uh, next one from Travis says, "How many sacks do you predict on number two this year?" How many was it last year? Do you remember the number? I want to say 56. It's around there at least. Easily the most in the nation. Let me find this, though. Can you – do you think cutting it in a half is crazy or is it conservative? No, I think that's that's completely fair because he was – I mean, it was just completely under siege. Yeah, I mean – Some games he's getting sacked like seven or eight times a game. If you were just to say – so how many games did they, they lost five games right by a score or less? Uh, I, I think it's ten points or less because the UCLA game was ten or nine points. Okay, either way, imagine if you had twenty-eight more offensive plays <laughs> across mm-hmm. the, those games. Like how many of them would have turned? Yep. I'm trying to find this number here. Uh, so this is from November tenth. Boy. 10th. <laughs> um, he was at sacked 45 times at November by November 10th, and I want to say he played in at least one more, maybe two more games after that before he got hurt against Washington State. Mm-hmm. It is really interesting. Um, the other day, when did you see the video of Shador and Cam Ward like comparing stats against mm-hmm. each other? And Shador said, "I missed two games," and you almost forget that it was what the first or second drive of Washington State that he came out. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, he really did do all of that in 10 games. Yep. Crazy. Yep. Travis says, I think, 52 sacks last year. Yeah, I think cutting it in half is actually, like, a conservative estimate. Definitely. Um, okay, next one from Brady B. says, do you think us offering all these 25 QBs means we're out with our top targets? Mm, I don't think so. Not necessarily. It I could, mean, you know. What we've heard from Juju is pretty encouraging. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely pulling for that one. That's, that should be target number one. Yep. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. But, I mean, I think even if you were feeling great about it, that doesn't mean you stop offering quarterbacks. Oh, definitely, yeah. And you'll have some guys who, like, rise through the process and stuff. You know, we, don't, we aren't even close to high school season yet, so – uh, another question from Jesse Marion says, when do the other commits get into CU? I don't know. It's different for everyone. Yeah. Uh, when they graduate and they're able to make the move, I guess. I don't know. June-ish is, I feel like, when a lot of them came last year. Yep. Uh, our one from Kamada says, what are the chances we see RK in the opposition band section during CU football season? Minus 2,000. <laughs> Hi. 
chances. High chances. <laughs> I might I might pull up on the Utah band tonight. <laughs> Let's go. Love it. <laughs> Hell yeah. You're in the stands? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you got a you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders tonight. I uh I accept that responsibility. <laughs> that's why I was put on this earth. <laughs> Can't wait. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Not many questions today. Great. Cool. Um, what do we do now? Uh, we either go to Stadium Swim or the sports book. I need to eat. Ooh, let's go to Victory Burger. Okay. I had that yesterday, but. <laughs> well, I mean, RG, we RG, RG had White Castle. He gets that like every day. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, I want, I want w- their wings. Okay. But I'm, I'm also open to other suggestions. We'll figure it out. You guys can do that. I'll find something. All right. We'll be, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll have some stuff coming out tonight on Twitter, some content there. Um, stay tuned. Big oh, game. Go Buffs. Do you need me at the, uh, after the game? I don't think so. If I, if I have RG, okay, cool. I can just film with him. That, that really opens up my band heckling <laughs> uh, possibilities. Are you going to be able to make it to T-Mobile by the time uh, yeah. the game ends? Okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. All right, cool. You're off the hook, brother. There it is. That was a little inside baseball for you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quick, last comment. Positive message clothing said, Jake and RK, greatly appreciate the shout-out you guys gave my brand the other day. Looking forward to this upcoming season and everything that you guys have in the works. Hope to meet you guys at UCF. Love it. Yes, sir. Thanks I for the I scoped out gifts. your uh, Instagram, too, and there was some really cool shit on there, so I might have to put a little order in. Yeah, give them a follow. Uh, support the community. Yes, sir. All right. Back tomorrow. Let's go Buffs. We all silly like the mayor. 